Spotted, it seems like two giant stars were caught in the middle of a romantic kiss. This sounds a little bit like paparazzi fodder at first, but we're actually talking about a cosmic twist an international team of astronomers has discovered. So, the life cycle of a solo star is relatively simple. They're born in vast, gassy areas of space, burn through their fuel, and at some moment, they explode as supernovae. But when stars are born relatively close to each other, their gravitational pull can cause them some troubles and captivate them into what seems like an eternal dance. In some moments, they come so close to each other that they're practically touching. These stars may spend billions of years circling each other, but their kiss lasts for a few million years only, which is just a blink of an eye in cosmic terms. The lead author of this study was on a mission to find these binary stars caught in such a cosmic kiss. He focused his search on the Tarantula Nebula, a beautiful star-forming region located in the Large Magellanic Cloud, which is 160,000 light-years away from our home planet. And there it was, the shiny double star system that stood out from the rest. The two stars found there were pretty big and nearly the same size. Together, they make a mass of about 57 times larger than that of our Sun. Before this, we discovered only three other binary systems with a large mass. And since these two stars were so close to each other, they created an intense gravitational pull. This made them orbit each other at a staggering rate of once a day with their centers a mere 7.4 miles apart. With the stars being so close, they formed a bridge where their fuel could mingle, allowing for around 30% of their total volume to be shared between the two. Temperatures of this system were crazy too. At first, it seems the internal mixing of their energy might make these stars live longer, as it allows for more fuel to be burned and for longer periods of time. But this is just a temporary benefit there are two most likely scenarios for the star's ultimate fate. They could merge to form one giant star, which would eventually explode into a supernova. Or they could each explode separately and live out their remaining years as black holes orbiting each other. If they merge, this process would probably take around 600,000 years, while if they become binary black holes, they could continue burning for another 3 million years. But both scenarios would ultimately lead to their destruction. Unless the stars could end up as two separate black holes drifting away from each other through the vastness of space, there's a possibility for that to happen too. There's something spectacular stargazers across the globe could see recently. Jupiter and Venus, the two brightest planets in the sky, ended up so close it appeared like they were about to collide, or as if they were kissing too. At least that's what it looked like from here on Earth. In real terms, they're still 400 million miles away from each other. Here's another interesting thing astronomers like to talk about, G-objects. Those are celestial objects that look like clouds of dust and gas, but behave like stars. At the center of our galaxy, there's a supermassive black hole. It's 4 million times the mass of our Sun, and recently, scientists found out there are two mysterious G objects that hang out pretty close to that black hole, so-called G1 and G2. And the most probable theory is that G2 are two stars that were orbiting the black hole in tandem and merged into an extremely large star cloaked in unusually thick gas and dust. During G2's closest approach to the black hole, it showed a strange signature. It was elongated and much of its gas was torn apart. As it got closer to the black hole, it lost its outer shell and now it's getting more compact again. The thing that has everyone excited about the G-objects is the material that gets pulled off of them by tidal forces as they sweep by the central black hole. This material must inevitably fall into the black hole, and the result is an impressive fireworks show. This happens because the material eaten by the black hole will heat up and emit radiation before it disappears across the event horizon. 
An event horizon is that scary boundary around a black hole from which nothing can escape. Now, it seems scientists have discovered four more G objects, and they're all located within 0.13 light years of this black hole. And it could be that all of the six objects used to be binary stars that got together and merged because of the powerful gravity of this giant black hole. Usually, it takes over a million years to finish the merging process between two stars. We definitely want more G objects because it's one of the rare opportunities for us to study how things behave near a supermassive black hole without being swallowed, yet. Have you heard of variable stars? Look up at the sky. We often think of the stars as unchanging, eternal lights. Yes, some stars might appear constant, but others change in brightness over time, which is why we call them variable stars. Some of them dim and brighten again over days, months, or even years. We can't see it with the naked eye. We're talking about changes astronomers can only notice using equipment and over longer periods. And how about vampire stars? Imagine two stars, a red giant and a white dwarf, in a binary system, swirling around each other like cosmic ballet dancers. The red giant, which used to be a vibrant and fiery star, now has aged and grown tired. Its outer layers of hydrogen, which were once held tightly by its gravity, have now weakened, making it vulnerable to the smaller, denser white dwarf. The white dwarf, known as the vampire star, thirsts for the hydrogen fuel that its larger sibling holds, and it sees a great chance there. As they spin together, the vampire star uses its powerful gravitational force to steal the hydrogen from the red giant's outer layers. The vampire star glows with a blue hue, looking full of energy and more youthful and vibrant than its aged dancing partner. Not only vampire stars, the horror continues with zombie stars too. Sometimes when the red giant explodes, it doesn't completely break up into smaller pieces. Instead, a white dwarf remnant is left behind. It's basically a zombie star that was gone at the moment but has risen back to life. But this isn't your average zombie hungry for brains. No, this star hungers for the very substance that its vampire sibling had been taking from it all along, hydrogen. And if the zombie star is close enough to its victim, it will start sucking material back in to start its core again. It will become a hydrogen explosive, ready to go boom in a spectacular show of cosmic revenge. It's a fascinating phenomenon. We usually won't even manage to detect it because these explosions are much fainter than the usual supernovas. But when it does happen, the resulting blast is truly epic. And it destroys both the vampire star and its zombie sibling. It seems vampires and zombies may not be a work of fiction after all. Not only are we made of stardust, but we're also more similar to stars than we thought too. For example, stars also like to hang out with their close group of friends. Most stars prefer to travel through the universe in clusters. It's a group of stars that end up bound together by gravitational force. The stars in the cluster are mostly made of the same age and type, hobbies and interests. I guess even they have better social lives than I do. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.